liberty and justice for all. All right. <coughs> is uh, Representative Berthium called in yet? He is 8282. 8282. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, we'll postpone any public comment. I want to start right off. We have State Representative Berthium is with us uh, via phone. They were in session today in the House. They just got out so he can call us on his ride. Um, good evening, Representative Berthium. Can you hear us? Donna, you there? Um, Do you have the ability to unmute him, Jessica? Does, does he? Not I think he was calling in on the phone, so it should just be a phone call. Yes. Unless he zoomed in on his phone. I didn't check what she was no, doing. No, he's here on his cell phone, and I'm trying to unmute him. <clears throat> it's not Sorry about the delay, folks. We're trying to get the representative in the meeting. Um, do we give him the right phone number for a phone call, or do you think he's called in on the Zoom yeah. number? Yeah, no, he's up there in that corner right there. So that's on the call inside. Okay, Joshua Smith is suggesting to, um, that Rep Berthew presses star six on his phone. Okay, if you can hear us, try pressing star six on your phone. Yeah, he did send me a picture that he has on speaker on his phone. So he's able to hear us? I didn't answer. I believe it's a different phone that I'm texting, but oh, if he's driving, he's not going to be able to answer. Right, right. Um, Well, why don't we take a minute then? We'll we'll go back to um, yeah. It says yes, she has to unmute me. So he says he can hear us, but you have to unmute. I'm asking him to unmute his mic because he's able to do it by pressing the star six. Uh, so I, what they're saying is you have to press star six now to unmute it on your end, Donnie. Because I give, I've given him permission to talk, but it's on his side that he has to. Uh, it's like a double door system. Yeah, I didn't have that problem when I called in before. Um, yeah. I don't know. Hoping we can hear you, but nothing yet. He says he's unmuted. Maybe if he, because he's potentially trying to call us back. Could you, could, you, could you try to hang up and, and dial in again, Representative, please? He said, yep. Okay. 
And how many people do we have? Um, we have five residents calling in. Okay. And any other phone calls or? Nope. I'm surprised we didn't have more. He's showing me a picture of his yeah, screen. He's. You may find that you have your uh, microphone symbol that you can click. Maybe that'll help. He is. Um, he's sending me a picture, of a screenshot of his phone screen, the other one, and it's just it's on speaker, so it's not muted. It's. It's on speaker ready. So it's good. I mean, we got to keep trying something here. There's going to be something on this end that we're doing wrong. What are the other options up there? Uh, the option that I can I can press a button that says ask. Unmute. And I don't know what that sends, if that sends him a message on the other end saying press star six. So perhaps we've sent you that message, representative, that says ask to unmute. Maybe you're going to be prompted for permission for us to unmute you. I don't know. I don't know if anything's come through since we sent that. What are the options in the, in the right there, all the options? So the options up here, it says to unmute audio, disable talking, um, rename, hide non-video participants, or remove. But when I click unmute, it doesn't look like it does anything. Hmm. Well, this is not uh, going well. Perils of technology. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Does he's, he have the Zoom app on his phone? Uh, he says just go on with the meeting. He can hear us, but obviously we wanted um, to have his yeah. input. Yeah. Um, What do, you th what do you think, Representative? Uh, would you like to call into my phone and I can put you on speaker next to the uh, microphone here for the town? Just my cell phone that you're texting. That means I have to unmute my phone. Good evening. Hey, everybody. There we go. All right, we have you on here now. I'll put you next to the microphone. Hopefully, people can hear you at home. Welcome. Sure. Where do we begin? Um, 
obviously, um, I've, I've asked you here, and I know you've talked with um, Selectman Urban before. Um, we have many roads in town left that don't have any cable access and um, also therefore don't have decent internet access. And um, between teachers at a home and, and people that live there with students, it, it makes a problem for a lot of people in town. And we, we've had no success dealing with the cable company to try to get a, a reasonable solution of fix. Um, they gave us an estimate of something in the neighborhood of seven or $800,000 to run cables down the last four or five roads in town. Um, and there's nothing I believe, and we do have our chairman of our um, cable committee with us, Joshua Smith, tonight. I believe there's nothing in our contract um, that coerces them to, to run any cables unless there's something in the neighborhood of 10 houses per mile for a density on, on roads. Um, so kind of wanted to pick your brain, see if you have any ideas or solutions or things we might not have thought of. Um, but I'll let, give the other selectman a chance to pipe in before we uh, let you answer. So Matt, want to go ahead, please, and then we'll get to Dylan. I mean, either either. Okay, um, Representative, could you hear Selectman Urban? I can. Okay, great. I just want to make sure before we went too far. Anything else, Matt, or should we let Dylan? No, that, that's it for me right now. Okay, and Dylan, anything else you want to add or? Okay, Donnie, we'll turn it over to you. Okay, so um, I can tell you from my experience, um, I negotiated a contract twice when I was selecting Spencer. Um, and cable companies are historically the hardest to deal with because they kind of have a monopoly. Um, they told you, Greg, I think, they own all the wires. So it's hard to get somebody else to come in because they'd have to rent you know, the, the current company's wires, so it would be cost prohibitive to them. Um, so we did it twice. <clears throat> Excuse me, once was to cover more parts of the town, and another time was to get more money for the cable access studio. Um, it was just on negotiations. And I think you guys are up soon, right? Uh, Jessica's shaking her head no. No. Um, 2029. Oh, I thought it was up sooner. Oh, so than you that. it was, and you guys just did it. Okay. Uh, Josh was saying 2024, but. I'm uh, all right. So Josh was saying 2024, so we'd still be three years out. Okay. Um, well, I mean, I mean, you could start that now. As far as mass broadband, I know we tried to do that. I, I was working with Andrew on that, but you guys didn't qualify <laughs> because you know, population, demographics, whatever, and I can check into that, see if there's any changes to that. I try to push them. The other way we could do it is, I mean, I could try to do a, a budget amendment will be next year. So it, <laughs> so it sounds like that program helps more, it, it more populated so the, places. So Mass Broadband rewired, I mean, got most of Hobbertson. We got it to, nine, uh, I'm sorry, Hardwick, to 95% maybe. Okay, and what is it that we didn't qualify because we had too much coverage or? You know, I can't remember. It, it had to do with demographics, maybe population or, or size. It, it was a couple of years ago we were doing it. So I can check back and get back to you. And I, I think somebody had asked before about the possibility of running wires extending out from a different town into our town with a different company. Is that permissible or is that? Uh, I, you know, I don't know. That's probably a contract. Okay, Is that, that would be another thought to allow another company to come down those roads. In, in some cases, it may be closer from a different town line to come in than to 
come through ours, but it may be a different provider. Um, Right, and I know right now we're doing that. Na um, National Grid comes there first, they replace the pole, then Verizon is supposed to re remove it when they're done because they're last in the pole, I believe. Um, and they're supposed to remove it. Um, we did, I think I asked uh, Representative Bertham, he said we do have the right to run our own wires, so we could hire out a company um, to run cable down to these houses. But, the, but then we'd be looking at finding companies to do it, going out to bid for the town to run those cables, and, we, and we'd probably need to determine in advance if, um, you know, Charter would be willing to use those wires once we ran them, or if we'd have to donate those to Charter, or how that would work. Um, I don't know if Representative Berthium has any idea on how that works, if, if we'd still own it, or if we'd have to lease it to Charter or something, or how would that work if we run our own? I'm not sure on that either, but I mean, if you put all these together, I can find out that there too, the answers to all these questions. Okay, so we, if we get these possibilities, we'll find out what you can and can't do and and go from there. Um, you know, hoping hoping you'd have something for a grant up your sleeve or, or some good suggestion for us, but... It's yeah, the NBI was the big one because that, that was so... Um, like New Braintree got money, and because New Braintree is one house every five miles, they were looking at a wireless uh, internet cable thing there. Um, so that's what they're looking into. The 5G. Um, hey, do you have a list of the roads that aren't serviced? Uh, we do, yes. Can you can you get that to me? Certainly. Right, if you can get that to me and all these questions, I can find out very quickly the answers for you. Appreciate that. too but i can tell you that um with the onset of this virus that's a big issue with all the um, remote schooling and remote work stuff um so there is a big push for that now so so if they were doing some regulation they might also would consider some kind of mandate for these cable companies that they're going to have to supply this Oh, good. Well, the state funded all those um, wireless hotspots. There was one in, was it New Braintree Fire Department? Did you guys get one up there, close up there? 
I, I don't know. We not not near in our town. But, okay. Uh, yeah, because you had you had decent cable coverage. You said, do you know what percentage of your town is covered? With cable, I, I don't know, but I I would guess it's over ninety percent. Wouldn't you say, Matt? Do you remember how many houses? Right. Yeah, that's the issue we had with Hardwick. Some of the last few houses was um, there was one house down a four thousand foot road. Um, so, so they covered so much, and then what they were doing was letting homeowners pay a reduced rate. Um, like if you had a super long driveway, you could um, they would give you a reduced rate to get the cable to your house. Um, that's what the broadband money was for, but I mean that's the best route if we can check into that and see if see if we can get you some of that would be great. That would we did um, get a hundred thousand dollars allowed for us at town meeting to use towards this project, but we promised the town we're not just going to go buy a hundred thousand dollars and see where it goes. We're going to try to get the best bang for the buck. Try to get some matching funds, some grant funds. Get some cooperation with with the, the cable company. Maybe that if we if we pony up so much, they'll do a reduced rate or eat some of it and try to get these uh, customers online. You know, which it is more customers for them. I, I believe it's a a few hundred customers when it's all said and done. Um, did, did you guys just so did you just sign a five year deal to end in twenty four? It was a ten year deal. Uh, 14. Uh, Joshua, could you answer that for us if we unmute you here? Let me see if we can get you on online here. We're going to bring Josh in as a panelist. Josh, can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Thank so you. The, uh, yeah, the answer to the question is that we did our contract negotiation in 2014. It's a 10-year contract, and as, as was already mentioned, it's, it has nothing to do with the Internet, right? It's a cable TV um, and, you know, peg funding contract. Okay, so it was 10 years and it runs out in 2014, and it's for a peg fund and cable. Is there, is there a re-opener in there at all? Is there a re-opener in there at all? Sometimes there's a re-opening cause in those. I don't think so. Um, I mean, not, not unless there was, you know, you know gross um, underperformance or something like that, right? Uh, they'd have to really break the terms. Because I, I know some towns would do a 10-year and then at five years they would have a clause now where you could get back to renegotiate for certain things. Um, I didn't know if you guys had one. Some do and some, some don't do that. No, he says no such clause. Okay. Okay. So so can Jessica email a copy of that contract? Yes. Yeah, or she hard, says yes. Hard copy, what it would want to do. Or hard copy either way. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Thank you. Uh, that's a, I'm just making my notes here as we go. Um, so it'd be wise, I think, either way, Josh, we get into the next one to do a five-year reopener. Maybe to try to see what we can do to work on um, coverage in the negotiations for the for the contract. Um, yeah, we've tried really, really hard, and I think that um, it, given that, that you know the, the shifts that have happened in the industry since then, I, I mean, I, don't don't put your uh, hopes in that because we tried really hard to just get a better formula, and and they wouldn't budge. Um, we were trying to get a formula that would say that they would only charge people um, the amount that it would cost if everybody on the road signed up. And they wouldn't even agree to that. So um, it, it, they, were, they, they basically were in a position where they held all the cards. The only card that they were willing to play was you know, raising the, uh, the franchise fee uh, to pay for peg funding, which is great. And it's, well, you know, it's been very helpful here. Um, but honestly, that doesn't come out of their pocket. That comes out of the subscribers' pockets. So right. they don't, you know, they just don't care. So I guess a, a better yeah, question. Gosh, right, they're historically hard to deal with. And, and they, I mean, try, the peg funding, he, he's right. They'll give you whatever as people pay for that. But to get anything else above and beyond, they are absolutely hard to negotiate with. 
And is this something that the state could work on uh, on regulating? Because this is a, a unregulated market in, in many aspects. They they take what they want for funds. They offer what they want for channels. Um, you know, there's no such thing as getting 25 bucks worth of TV anymore. You know, a cheap a cheap package is fifty dollars or sixty dollars, and you get nothing for it. You know. Yeah. Yeah, we pay almost three hundred bucks with everything here. It's it's insane. So it is insane. It is. That's no phone. We don't even a home phone anymore. We all use cell phones. Right. Uh, but but the good thing, like I said, the good thing about this, uh, the one one of the few good things about the virus is it's brought a lot of attention to this. Um, and the cable is the main internet for most towns, you know, around here. So. It's certainly a bargaining chip and a leverage tool. This, that hundred grand could be used as leverage, probably. With them, but I said that they don't like the deal. So I mean, I wouldn't put a lot of stock in it. But we can try it. We can certainly try it. Um, Ann and I, I call Ann's office. We can send a ton of emails and and try to put pressure on them. Uh, you know, we'd certainly appreciate that. We need it. Um, and I, I think there's probably a lot of small towns like us, you know, the, the big cities don't care. They have it. They've got the population density. They have the coverage where they want it. But, you know, this is more of the same thing with it, that we always rumble about out here is, we, you know, taxation without representation. You know, we, we pay our fair share of taxes out here in the middle part of the state, but we watch a money funnel for, for schools and, and roads and everything else. Uh, disproportionately towards the large cities, and we just don't get the same assurances and the same quality um, that the big cities get. You know, we're, we're not guaranteed internet, we're not guaranteed cable. Um, it's frustrating that, that we just don't seem to have the, the same attention out here, and I don't know what else we can do to get that attention. I, I can tell you that's got into this. I was a selectman for 10 years and shared your frustration, so, and it is an uphill battle on Beacon Hill. Um, Anne's really good. She's been there a while, and, and I like to yell at people, so so it's, yeah. I mean, we try, but it, it is an uphill battle. It's, um, it's, it's frustrating because I think that the, the population densities in, in, you know, Boston, Springfield, Worcester, places like that drive the vote for this entire state, no matter what the rest of the state thinks. And um, obviously politicians got to listen to those votes. But I, I don't know how else we address that and, and try to get some equality out here for it. It's it's frustrating that a cable company can have that much power and authority, um, and that we can't regulate it. And I, I don't know why the state wouldn't see that, especially with what's going on with the pandemic and education. Why they wouldn't see that and and collectively um, really make a move for it. I mean, maybe maybe the now is the time to push for that. Um, up on the floor and, and, and try to get someone to, to listen. Um, I, I, you're right. I, I, and if you can get me all this in an email and that thing, I mean, I can talk with Ann and, and we can do our best for you. All right. And maybe we get a petition coming from folks in town and have people sign it that are having these problems. We do have a couple online tonight. And I'd like to take a moment now, if anybody wants to... Um, comment on this topic that's called in. I see a couple, Claire, and um, I can't read them all. I know the Dotsons will probably want to comment. If you raise your hand, we could um, bring you into meeting and let you have a comment here. No one raising a hand yet? I know the Dotsons were very interested in this, and I thought they'd have comment, but perhaps not. Um, quite frankly, I can't read the rest of them from here, but <laughs> yeah. the other I see Claire up there. Yeah, we have Claire and then uh, Deb Culver. Deb Culver. Do, do you have the ability to put my email address on the screen there and, and tell them they can email me any concerns they have? Yes. Sure. Yes, we'll let Jessica work on that. She can. I put it in the comments. She can do that. Technology stuff, put it in the comments. All right. Uh, I just got a text message from John Dotson. He just said, Thank you for looking out for us in Jewett Road. Um, so he's not going to come on and comment, but he 
just did send a message through. Um, so they, they, are, they are listening, and that's their concern. That's one of our roads that doesn't have uh, the service. Go ahead. Josh, um, are we stuck with charter spectrum? Or when we get to the 2024 period, we can kind of bid that out and see if another place wants to take over the town's cable service? Or do you just have it, that's it? Charter owns the line. I'm going to lose you here. Hold on. Um, can you call him on your phone? You get the cell. He's just saying, give your cell. My battery just died. And I'm off. Then he gave me his email address, but you already have it, I assume. So you're going to call back the um, 81. It's his regular cell phone. Dollars to run new lines on top of the poles to provide that service. And then they'd have to get people to switch. Um, so, you know, it, our, our, our agreement doesn't force us into having only one provider. It simply um, sets up a bunch of terms for how charter is to behave on our poles. Basically. Okay. And as I mentioned before, it's got nothing to do with So we're not even allowed to negotiate for internet? No, we, no, it was, our, our lawyer was very clear with us when we were negotiating the contract that even though we were all thinking about the internet all the time, we couldn't ever use that word. We were only talking about cable TV because the, uh, the federal legislation that enables us to even have these franchise agreements is strictly about cable TV. And we still have something we haven't talked to. I don't know if we have. We haven't talked to Verizon. And just so everybody knows, uh, my, my cell phone just died. It's uh, three years old. It's probably time to get a new one soon. So we're trying to get Jessa to get Representative back on and, and her phone. But I, I lost my contact with him because my phone is dead. Um, but hopefully we'll get him back on here in a minute. We do have his email address um, put up in the comments portion online here. So anybody that's zoomed in um, can get his email address if you want to contact him with your concerns directly. Um, I would encourage everyone to do so. The more comments going to him, the better. Um, and we'll have to post that on maybe the website during the week so people who are not on Zoom um, but are joining us can also get that email address uh, later. Hopefully we'll get him back. I don't know if you probably didn't recognize my phone number, so I'm just going to send him a text. Yeah, shoot him a text first and just say, you know, Greg's di phone died. This is Jessica. He was just asking me to make sure you had his contact info so he could message you directly. Um, that's, that's what I just got before I, I lost it. So, Dylan, something on your mind or? It's 
not like charters lines or something that can be easily reused. So I, I you know, I suppose you could try to do a, a, a taking, <laughs> you know, kick them out um, and you know, uh, take their property. I, <laughs> I, I don't think you could force them to, to let you use their wires because these protocols, the DOCSIS protocols that are used over cable systems, I mean, they're not really designed for that. They're not designed to have multiple people riding on the same um, on the same piece of coax. So, yeah, I, that doesn't sound to me like something that could happen. But uh, I don't know. Right. I think the wires are mutually exclusive. Like Peter Sam, they they started a whole plot, right, with a with a system with a yeah a, yeah, and they they, they did run, yeah they actually I think they ran fiber, um, so that they could provide you know uh, you know gigabit level service. Have you got them yet? I can't even look the number up because my phone just shut. It's dead. I don't know the details you can try them on the 82 number as well. I doubt very much that the town of Petersham is operating. That. He does have that phone they with him. Hired somebody who knows how to run a, a system like that to run it for them. Uh, I was reading a little bit about um, municipalities using a, uh, under uh, using the umbrella of a municipal light. Welcome back, Don. So, so if there's one thing I learned during this virus and the 8,000 phone calls it's been on, it's always keep your phone charged. Just let you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're, um, we're over talking to the other guys right now, so we'll just hold on a minute. So my, my other thought, we've got Donnie back now. My phone died. Uh, Jessica's uh, got Representative Berthium back on, on speaker with us, so he is here again. Um, I do see we have a, someone, Kimberly Roach, is it say, just came in. I don't know if they have a comment they want to make. Uh, that's our labor council. That's our labor council. Oh, well, there we go. So um, did, did they come in because somebody asked them, or did they come in with a comment or something? Oh, just waiting for that. Well, very well then. Never mind. Um, my thought too is that uh, we haven't really done much discussion about um, talking to Verizon and maybe fiber optic uh, with Verizon. I don't know if, if they'd be more willing to talk to us about going um, at least to the unserviced homes for internet. I don't know if either of you have reached out and see what the representative thinks about that. If we can we, can we ask municipality to contact Verizon to ask them about internet for these homes, or are we not even allowed to do that? I, I don't know if you can or can't, and I'm not familiar with that. I know, what was that, Fios or something that Verizon was doing? Right. Somebody told me a little while ago that they're going to stop doing that. I don't know how accurate that is, but um, I have a really good contact at Verizon, and I mean, I could call them all and find out absolutely, if you, especially if you can get me that list of the roads that are unserviced. All right, because what, what Josh had said was something to the effect that 
municipalities are not allowed to get involved in bidding or talking about the internet, correct? What we're not allowed to do is regulate. We can't co so we can't contract with them, but we can certainly con contact. We can contact, but not. Okay. So yeah, that uh, we'll put that on our list of things. We'll ask you to look into uh, Representative Berthium and be whether or not we can get anywhere with Verizon on servicing that list of roads that we'll have. Um, you know, I don't know. I would assume they're off their regular phone lines. They get a limited service. I know they can do not dial. They can do like a DSL or something off the line, um, which is better than nothing, but not necessarily as good as we're looking for. But yeah, I, I'm not sure if that could be in that or high shot. I'm really, I'm not sure about the specifics, but I mean, I, once again, I can certainly find out for you. Okay. I don't know if you hear what, what Josh was saying, Donnie, was that um, it really depends. If we already have files here, they could extend it. But if we don't, it's not necessarily something they're going to bring out. But I believe we have files run to our municipal buildings. So I believe they have it in fiber optic. All right. So we have a fiber optic wire in town, but we don't necessarily have any specific cable service to that fiber optic wire. Okay. 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 Do, do you know, Josh, offhand, where that fiber wire came from? Who owns it? Is it a Verizon fiber or is it a cable fiber? Who? Well, actually, the, the state of Massachusetts provided that. So that's um, that municipal broadband initiative that you mentioned earlier. Okay. So So it might also be possible to have a different company run wires down these last roads and connect to that fiber trunk line and supply internet from a different provider through that fiber cable, depending where it goes to. I don't even know where it goes. Okay. So and that would be a good question for legal counsel, if I heard correctly. That I, I, I don't know if um, cable company would appreciate, you know, somebody else servicing some of the houses in the town. They have a contract. I mean, you could. I, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not an attorney. I wouldn't know. And I don't know um, contracts. You know, I've, I've negotiated some, uh, but on like, like the selectman side. So I don't. I don't know the ins and outs. That would be a good question for town counsel. So we need to ask town council whether or not we can actually contract out for a different company since we're under a contract with Charter. Yeah, yeah, I would. I mean, it sounds like it's a legal issue that Charter would have an issue with. That, you know, you you would think maybe not, maybe not. Josh is saying no; they don't have a mutually exclusive right.
right? People can get internet service okay. lots of ways. In gotcha. From satellite, from telephone, right? All sorts of options. Right. All right, so what Josh is saying, if we do it strictly as an internet service, it's got nothing to do with the charter because we can't regulate a contract the internet. Oh, true. Yeah, true. That's so, a good angle, so, right? So we, yeah, could look, right? so we can look at that angle. Um, if not getting charter service to people, we can look at the angle of getting them into that strictly in, in looking, and we haven't really looked at it that way, I don't think. Matt, I don't know if you've considered it that way as internet only. Matt, can you hear me? Oh, I think you have a call coming in. Yes. Oh, sorry. Space times. All right. Rather than unmuting me. Um, yeah, I think it, it comes back down to better understanding the layout of what fiber we did have installed so we know what parts of the, the town that already is crossing. Because then we'll have a better idea of where those wires might connect and be these underserved areas. They may not really be adjacent. So if we've got to run a long run from one end of town to the other to cover it, um, it's hard to say if it would be useful, but the, the one benefit it is, is the longer you run it, the more potential customers you have to tap into. So, um, and ultimately that would be something that as we, even if just the town decided over time we would continue to expand that, we would own it. So we could start doing an RFP to sell that wire service to somebody over and over and over, you know, and every five or every 10 years, we go out to bid again and we get someone that can serve our town better than Charter Spectrum. And I think one thing that Charter Spectrum will be short-sighted on, especially if we start taking that initiative is, the internet's gonna take over TV soon. So they'd have nothing to stand on with TV if that's all they're standing on because the more I look at it, it's not worth paying my cable bill. As long as I can get internet, I don't need TV. So I'll just pay for the internet, get rid of the TV, and then I'll buy my different channel subscriptions. So, I mean, we're getting to a point where if Spectrum keeps holding strong, they're going to run themselves out of business. Because, yes, we could just rewire the town ourselves and then sell it off to the lowest bidder. Um, well, when it comes to rewiring the town, I think we need to locate some private vendors that would run wires on poles. First of all, as Selectman Urban has said, we need to find out where we can run stuff on the pole, what, where our space is on there, and um, maybe draw up a, an RFP for for running wire what it's going to include we you know we need to know what we're what we're asking for we asking for just wires do we need booster boxes so often battery backups i don't know all that's going to be involved um strictly internet speaking at this point um so, so there's a bunch of companies that do that you, um, one thing you're going to find out is in some places is verizon okay. owns the poles and some places um, grid owns the poles, and some they're a JO pole, they're joint owned. Um, so that you know, when a car or, or if a pole goes down because of a storm, it Josh, can, Josh, can you hold on one second? Uh, thank you. So go, go ahead, Donnie, finish. So it just depends on who owns the pole, you know. So I don't know if you guys, like I know in some towns, I think East Brookfield's either all Verizon or all National Grid. Um, I know in Spencer we're split. There's a bunch of different ones. I don't know if you have an exclusive one or if yours are split from different ones because that'll that'll determine what gets to go on the poles. Like your question before, the amount of wires and how far. We we have a mix of ownership between, as I recall from the fire department side, we have a mix of ownership between um, National Grid and Verizon. In okay. in the agreement they came up with just a couple of years ago, because we we had issues with who who's responsible for taking the poles away. And I believe uh, yeah, yeah, when you replace it, right? Right. So the companies come up with the agreement that when, when there's a pole that's damaged, National Grid will come out and replace the pole because they have to get their power up high first. And then the other companies come in and do their work, and Verizon should come last and remove the pole. 
Um, yep. So I don't know if it really matters. I think no matter whose poll it was, I think that's the agreement they've worked out in town. But the polls are rolling with the combination. Again, you can find out who owns them if you give me the streets. You know, the, the involved streets you're talking about with the houses that aren't served. Certainly. Yeah, so I can find out. And who owns polls on the unserviced streets? All right. Um, go ahead, Josh. Sorry, you can finish up that comment. I just, it's, I can hear you both, um, and I'm sure people are getting, you know, both at the same time, which, which would be frustrating for them. That's a good idea. Get get a better idea of what they did. And we'll, as I said, I don't know what we're, we're contracting for. Is it just wire? Is it wire and boosters? Is it wire boosters and certain connections for houses? And I don't know. Um, I assume when every time you tie a house, and there's got to be a certain termination point, depending on what type of a wire you run, whether it's a fiber or it's a um, cable. So I, I don't know if they're just T-tapped in or, or how those work. I, I did security systems for a lot of years. Um, and every time that you tie in, there's going to be some sort of connection there. So whether that requires any sort of power supply or backup or waterproof connection, um, those are all the things we need to figure out before it goes out to bid. But I think we've got a good list of going of things um, to check with, um, to have a um, representative look into for us. <coughs> do you guys meet every two weeks? Every two weeks, yes. So do you want to give me that list and then... I can either get your answers or I can come back on if you have more questions in two weeks. It's up to you. Sure, that'd be great. I'd love to have you back in two weeks. Um, so we can get this list we've talked about, and we'll have people, once again, um, we've put the representative's email address up um, in the comments section on Zoom. And if somebody wants to email the representative otherwise, they can call into the office. Um, I don't know if I necessarily want to put it up on the website, but we could. Do you have a problem with that? if we put on the website, Donnie, or your email address? No, you can You can put my cell phone on there if you want. Oh, okay. I give it to everybody, so well, if people are more comfortable talking, just give my cell number. You can put that on there. Uh, I appreciate that, but I probably won't. We'll, we'll put the email and keep it on. Keep Listen, I've had like three people in six <laughs> years. I've had to tell don't call me again. It's not as bad as you think, so. Uh, uh, we all have a couple there. Um, all right, so we'll get that out there. So everyone else, if you want to call the representative or send him an email, um, things you'd like him to, to look into for us before we hear from him again in two weeks, we'll get that information up online. As I said, the email address is up in the comments section now on Zoom. Um, same thing, Josh, Matt, and Dylan. If you have anything else you can think of or any questions that, that you want to have him answer that you come up in the next few days, um, we can get that out there and um, you know, see where we can go from here. I think we got a lot. We've talked about a lot of options on the table. I, I think I'm liking the idea of, of targeting internet only because it doesn't violate an agreement with Charter. Um, and there is no regulation that stops us from, from talking to anyone to see what they'll do. And maybe a couple different companies might give us an idea that if we did X, Y, or Z, then they could come in and do it, you know what kind of setup they need from us that, that we can look into so we can start finalizing a plan of what we're going to do and what we're going to uh, look for grant money for if we can get it and what we're going to have to fund. Um, I'd like to try to get a picture together before town meeting if we can. So if we need to go for funding for this, we have a proposal to put forward to the town um, with a finite plan that we can move forward with. So anything else you guys think of, definitely um, bring those comments forward. Go ahead, Matt. Yeah, um, I know Princeton also ended up having to work out something around their own wires. They were having the same problem with, uh, I think they have Comcast, but I'm not certain. It might have been Spectrum at the time. Um, and the cable company was fighting them nonstop. And Princeton went to the state, tried to get, I think, 
Right. Obviously, there's something in it for them. There's more customers as we do this, and the potential for even more because of the undeveloped lots that are out there that they clearly, you know, it, it's the low demand place to live because there is no service for like like that for cable or internet. Um, makes it hard to, to sell a home there and develop it. So um, I agree. We we definitely have to talk to them, and you know, I'm I'm sure they'd rather we'd rather keep it with one company than bring someone else in to service it, but I think we need to make sure we check our, our costs both ways. Um, you know, if we do get a better pr price somewhere else, that is a bargaining chip with Charter. That, you know, so-and-so can do it for this much, and, um, you know, we just, we just need to start taking more action on it. We've, we've been talking about it for too long. You know, we, we've been spinning our wheels. We've gotten nowhere, and um, we have a great chance here now to get answers to certain questions, to know what we can and can't do. Um, I'm sure that Representative Berthium and can get with Ann Gobi and they can see if there is more funding, more grant money they can be make available for something they can look into next year's budget um, to make funds available for something like this. And um, I think this is a good time to have the discussion as budget season is approaching. You guys have anything else for the representative before we uh, give him his time back? Okay, 
Any, anybody online want to have a raise their hand, have a question or anything before we um, let the representative go? Does it look like it? Uh, representative Berthium, thank you very much for being here tonight. We look forward to hearing from you in two weeks. And um, I'm sure Jessica will get you the list. She does have your text now, as, as you know. And um, we'll get you that list of things we're looking into. And you know, anything you guys can do at, at the state level um, to you know, facilitate dis discussions with the cable company or with even Verizon about Fios, if, if they're willing to do it or what it would take for us to get a service from them, what's available from them, um, we'd appreciate it. Yeah, I can look at all this stuff, and thanks. Yeah, anytime you, you need me to come on, or um, I certainly will. And Jessica, I get, I'm guessing this is your cell phone you sent me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so send me that, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. We appreciate it. Thank you, and have a good night. All right, thank you. Tell Wendy we said hi. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. All right. That was a... Fun start to it. We'll go backwards here, do a quick public comment period. If anybody wants to have a public comment about that topic or anything before we move on with the regular business, I'll look for raised hands for a moment. None. Okay, we'll move on to the first order of new business today. Uh, other than conversation, we have the uh, 2021 common vehicular entertainment and motor vehicle license renewals list. You guys have that list before you? I assume it's in their packets. Okay. And I assume one, some of these that don't have numbers, check numbers next to them just haven't paid yet. So we're looking to approve all of these that are listed here um, with the caveat that their licenses will not be released to them until they catch up on their real estate taxes or other fees that they owe the town or these license fees. And where was that new smoothie place that I talked to you about before? Is that it's a new? So that will be that's like a new. This is that they're not renewing because they're a new business, so they won't be on this list. That's a separate. That will be a separate public hearing. Oh, okay. Because I haven't seen that yet. Yeah. And they're still running, right? I think so. Okay. We need to see that soon. Yeah, I guess my only question on that was just. You know, I, I would be surprised that they didn't go for a common vic because they are like a locally owned operation, but they're owned by bigger business. That was like like a Dunkin' Donuts. That's kind of a franchise where they are told exactly X, Y, and Z what they need to do in order to operate the business. So I'm surprised that they haven't approached the town or they weren't told have, have you, otherwise. Have you had a discussion with them about that yet? Is I that Please do, because yep. I, I know I brought that up a few weeks ago now. Yep. Um, they, they need to, uh, in, I don't know if you've talked to the Board of Health to make sure they're inspected. Yeah, all. they're all they've, set from the they've Board They've done of that, they just haven't got the license. Yeah, okay. they, they're all set with the town clerk's office and everything, so. Okay. Um, but that's, they're going to need to do that, so we'll, mm -hmm. we'll leave that up to you. Uh, just talking about, guys, there's a new smoothie place in town. I've seen it all over Facebook, and they've never come for a particular license from us, and they still haven't. Um, 
So I'm just asking Jessica to follow up with that during this week and, and let them know they've got to come in and get that application done. They are good with the Board of Health. They've been inspected and they've done everything else. They just don't have the uh, license from us is all. Um, do you guys have any questions about the list? I don't know. Can you guys have any? No. Um, I don't think we need to individually read each of these. The list is will be is is it online? It is online now, Jessica, and will be published. Yep. Okay, it's online and published, so people can look up all the specific names on this list. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six. We have twenty-eight on the list that will be renewing right now. That is removing Becky's Bistro and Weenies. I look for a motion for the common particular renewals. And the caveat, if you would add about um, payment before issuance. There are no caveats regarding the common insurance license. Oh, those are all paid? Yes. Oh, I, I stand corrected. Thank you. What about your J and J camera? Uh, they paid today. They paid today. I have a motion to second to approve the listed uh, account particular licenses as presented here this evening. Any further discussion? Hearing now, I'll call for vote. All those in favor? Sullivan, yes. Gregor Sullivan, yes. Next, we have our 2021 entertainment licenses. Um, they look like they have all paid. Short list one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. Uh, Camp Colebrook RV Resort, the Harding Allen Estate Bed and Breakfast LLC, Title Seafoods, Stone Cow Brewery, Dunkin' Donuts, Hartman's Herb Farm, Northeast Pizza, and the Upper Deck Sports Bar. I'd entertain a motion on those. Motion a second to move the entertainment licenses to 2021. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for vote. All those in favor? Clark, yes. Gregor Sullivan, yes. And lastly, motor vehicle license renewals. We have uh, BNC Auto, Higgins Energy Alternatives, White Valley Motors, George Riley, DVA Motor Specialist Company, PNF Services Incorporated. Spring Hill Auto Savage and A and B Marketing. Um, Jessica, those other ones did pay today. You said. Yes. So B B C Auto and P N F both paid today, and then A and B Marketing will. I have to catch up on the yeah. real estate taxes. So we've been looking for a motion for those, with the caveat that A and B won't receive their license till they catch up in the real estate taxes. I have a motion. I have a motion to second to approve um, licenses excluding the A and B marketing. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor? Gregor Sullivan, yes. And we will revisit A and B when they do have their taxes paid 
Um, thank you, Matt, for that. That that's, was one of my pet peeves in the past, is people applying for things that are not prepared here, and I, I'm glad you didn't let that go. Um, next up on the agenda, Quadman Regional School District <coughs> request for expenditure of the funds related to the cover letter um, of the cover of the lease, pardon me, of the HULD Focus High Def Camera System in the Quabbin Regional High School Gymnasium from PEG Access Funds. Jessica, what is going on with that? Three thousand dollars, and did we? Has that already been put in the budget for the PEG access funds to expend that this year? Um, I don't think we have an expenditure line. What? I don't know, Matt. You call? Do we? I, do we approve PEG funds at the town meeting to spend a certain amount, or is it? Just want to make sure we don't approve money that we can't. If we do, it probably falls into the. It may be showing in the revolving fund list or something as a total max amount allowed to be spent per year from that, that fund. That's what I was wondering. Josh, no, do you. I, I don't recall if it's that or if it's one of the standard articles, one, two, or three about peg access funds. But I don't think those ever provide a, a dollar value, just that those funds can be used towards certain. Certainly. Josh, would you like to comment on that? Well, I can do a quick check. I, I don't recall um, what happened at town meeting regarding PEG. Um, so I can take a quick look at that while you guys talk. My, my only question about the um, using that money, uh, it strikes me as in, intuitively that sounds like exactly what PEG money is supposed to be used for. Yes. Just like we use PEG money to, you know, to, to uh, provide the cameras in this room, in the room that you're sitting in. Um, as long as the feed is actually going to, into the cable system. I don't actually have cable. Do you have cable here? Um, so I have no idea. Do they actually show those huddle feeds on the uh, educational channel? It's my understanding, yes, that they do get streamed um, to the television like this meeting is. Okay. okay. As long as it's going to the TV, that's exactly what that money is for, so I'd be not my place to say, but um, the, 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 um, the spending of PEG funds is kind of not really, uh, it hasn't been the, the responsibility of the, uh, the cable committee. Um, we've left that those decisions up to you as an administrative function. Um, but it seems to me that that's kind of what Right. I, I just didn't recall if, if it's an amount we set aside every year to use up front or, or not. Um, Okay. From so, those okay. So we do. We did put twenty-five thousand in the revolving account for the peg access. So we do have it. That answers my question. I right, look for a motion on that, then, gentlemen. Uh, do we have the documents? Three thousand. Three thousand. Right now. Three thousand dollars. Three thousand. What we're looking to approve. For. But we'll just say the hot the. The, the huddle focus high def camera, um, they specifically have 3,000 exactly, or do we need to just leave that open as for the cameras? No, that's 3,000. Okay, so just 3,000 for those cameras for the access.
No, I'll wait for the second, then we'll do it, follow our procedure. And if need be, we can redo it. But. All right, I'll second the motion. I have a motion to second. I'll uh, look for any further discussion. Matt, go ahead. Very good. Dylan, any comment on that? Uh, no, I do not have comment on that. Okay, I have a motion to second to um, approve these funds. All those in favor? Clark, yes. Greg O'Sullivan, yes. Opposed? Matt Urban is opposed. Thank you. Passes two to one. Please note Matt was opposed. Um, COVID-19 update we'll do from Jessica.
the idea would be to have the regional high school as a location for um, you know, all of the towns in our school district to receive the um, vaccine. But of course, uh, we're not going to set something up that's going to be financially disadvantageous to the town of Barry. Um, but I do know that in the most recent um, congressional decision on coronavirus funding, they do have vaccine distribution funding included that in that that's going to go to the state. So I'll be interested to see how the state decides to distribute the funds um, to cover this, these expenses. Any um, update on <coughs> tents when they might, com might come in that might be usable for this? Yeah, so the tents, it was, it was really difficult with um, the holidays because a, a lot of people took off that time of the holiday. So um, our order hasn't gone through yet, but um, now that we're past the holidays, I think I'll be able to get in touch with someone. Okay. As I recall, they were several weeks out um, when yeah, I was I talking to them. Yeah, it was about them. six weeks. Right, so by the time we have um, the ability to, to vaccinate people in the town, we may be that far out. Mm -hmm. I don't know, we'll see. Yeah, we're looking at probably mid-March to the end of March. So what I understand statewide is uh, nationwide even, the um, millions of more doses of vaccine are available. I think it was something they put at 20 million, but it's, it's finding ways to distribute it in doctors and nurses to actually give the injections. It's, it's the, the slow end of this. Yeah. So we'll, actually, we'll see where it goes. I don't know if this was, this was definitely from the state level that um, they gave EMT professionals the ability to distribute the vaccine. I guess there's there's a certain certi certificate that you have to get to distribute a vaccine, and they waived that for EMTs and paramedics. So it kind of expanded um, our pool of people who can distribute a vaccine. Quite quite a bit in our yeah. town. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You guys have any questions or comments to go along with the COVID update? Still, I'll always add the caveat that 31 cases in town during flu season, we'd see hundreds and hundreds of cases. So um, the precautions people are doing, keeping their hands washed, social distancing, wearing a mask, um, perhaps those are keeping, keeping our numbers down because 31 is certainly not a huge spread rate um, in town. So it's nice to see that it hasn't gone to hundreds. It's not just readily passing through town. Um, you know, I don't want people to panic because it's 31. You know, in flu season, you'd see hundreds, if not thousands, of cases of the flu at the same time. Um, you know, I think our recovery rate in town is still 100% recover versus death. I don't think we've had any death in town from COVID. Um, so all in all, we're, we're lucky to be in a small town. We're fortunate that we are isolated from some of the larger cities, although people like, um, just like Minerva, do go into the city for work. People do go in the cities, um, but so far, um, you know, we don't have a crazy spread and that's good. Keep up the, uh, the diligence and, and hopefully when people start to get vaccinated, these things will relax, but um, as, as Matt said, don't just put your guard down and uh, go back to crazy big parties and, and stuff, um, but uh, this will start to spread again. And, um, you know, whether it causes someone to die or not, it's a, a painful illness for people. It causes 
uh, great discomfort, a lot of breathing issues. Some people, granted, absolutely nothing, no symptoms, asymptomatic, don't know they have it, but for other people, uh, very painful and, um, you know, something certainly nobody wants to have. So let's just keep it steady. Right. And, and certainly where more people stayed home this year, instead of uh, maybe one in four families putting on a big dinner, most families put on a dinner. So I think trips to the store were up, um, crowds at the stores were up, crowds for shopping, even if it wasn't people gathering. Um, I went out shopping a couple times. It was pretty crowded in a lot of stores. Um, you know, so people are out there. People had a lot of contact, even without violating the protocols that have been set forth by the state. I think um, just the holiday season that brought many more people to the stores and the grocery stores um, certainly probably in increased people's exposure to one another uh, just because it was a holiday, even, even without larger gatherings. So. Um, I think when you see 31 in town, it doesn't mean we had a lot of parties in town. I, I think it just means that everybody went out and did some Christmas shopping where they maybe haven't been doing so much. You know, maybe people go to a store, a grocery store once a week and a department store once a month, and maybe they all went four or five times in the last couple of weeks. And, and I would think that's probably more where we see it from. Um, but yep, keep it up, keep up what they're doing, and um, see it through. Well, it affects a lot of people. We also, we, it's less than not have affect you or your family directly, but there's a lot of people being affected by this very seriously. So well, I, it was just a sobering <coughs> thought I had when I saw that number, and it, I didn't know of the, the, the concept of thinking that your whole town dying twice in the last year might be something to give you a different perspective. Right, and remember that the United States loses over 2.8 million citizens a year that die. Um, and this last year was no exception. The death toll this last year actually went down slightly from the year before. Um, you know, some would speculate that some COVID deaths are mis mislabeled and not the only cause. The deaths are similar, but um, certainly if, you know, other deaths are down by CDC listing. But I think it is important to note that um, overall, the death toll for the country from 2019 um, and 2020 remain basically unchanged. We did not have a $300,000 uh, death spike or 10% spike in death nationwide this year. A death toll for the nation held steady over this year as, um, from last year. So however that plays out, COVID killed them instead of diabetes or COVID killed them instead of their heart disease, um, the death tolls um, were similar. It's, you can't read a lot in that except that they were similar. Um, there's no doubt that COVID has caused death and um, there's also no doubt that um, I have heard of examples from people that they've had loved ones die in a car accident that was labeled a COVID death because they've been tested positive for COVID. And I don't know how much of that really goes on. There are, there are incentives to label something a COVID death because of CARES Act money that went to hospitals for patients with COVID and patients that died from COVID. 
But I, I do think it's important that people understand the death toll this year, according to the CDC, was virtually the same as the death toll last year. Typically, over the last 10 years, the death toll increases by about 2% per year, and that didn't even happen this year. Um, so no matter what the pandemic's done, the death toll overall hasn't changed. I can't read anything into that to say that it's because COVID killed them instead of some other disease, it was going to kill them anyways, or somehow COVID, the restrictions have stopped loss of life somehow. Um, I don't know the car fatalities and things, you know, that could certainly contribute. Um, but overall in the nation, we didn't have a 10% spike in death as they were expecting this year. We had a even death toll this year from last year. So uh, yes, 12,000 in Massachusetts is a lot. Um, and, and that's about what we lose. And, you know, I don't know how many exactly I could look up the toll we normally lose, but we lose a lot of people. Um, every year in the United States with these 2.8 plus million people a year. Um, and, you know, other than COVID, a lot of those deaths come from drug abuse, alcoholism, COPD, heart disease, diabetes, and a lot of these other illnesses are also things that people can think about and control. And um, I just take a minute where we're talking about trying to protect us from COVID that, you know, if we paid the same attention um, to alcoholism, drug abuse, and diabetes, which typically comes off and comes with obesity and things, we could do things to trim the death toll in this country in a lot of areas. Um, for, for some reason, they've decided to highlight COVID as one right now. But, you know, death by motor vehicle is one of the biggest killers in this country, but we're certainly not going to take cars away. There is an inherent amount of risk every day for people. And um, I just think it's important to note that the death toll this year for the country hasn't changed from last year. Dylan, you, look, you want to say something? Go ahead. Matt, any closing comment on that? We all set? Sounds good. Thank you very much. Okay, Jessica, any last comments? Okay. You're free to throw an opinion in there. <laughs> all right. Let's move on. Uh, approval meeting minutes for December 21st, 2020. Um, I did get a chance to read these online, and I was all right with this. Um, <coughs> excuse me for this um, release of these minutes. I don't know if you guys have got a chance to read them. I have, and I have no issue with it. Okay. Take a motion, then. So, if you're okay with it, I'll make a motion. Please. Make a motion to accept the December 21st, 2020 meeting minutes. Second that motion, 
Motion is second to uh, accept the 20, 20, December 21st, 2020 meeting minutes. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for vote. All those in favor? Greg O'Sullivan, yes. Those meetings minutes are done. Uh, correspondences, I see none this week. Select board reports. You guys have anything you want to bring up? Six talked about a lot of the things I wanted to bring up. Okay. Matt, anything for you? Okay, Todd Administrator Report. Jessica, your turn. Yes, so. And then we'll get to our. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say that December was a bit of a slower month um, just because we did have the two holidays mixed in there. Um, and so a lot of people, like a lot of vendors, a lot of people that I work with on a regular basis uh, took some time off. So it was pretty, pretty quiet month. However, uh, we did start the budget um, all of the departments have their budgets to work on now, and they're due next Thursday um, to me, and then I'll have a, um, the first budget um, will be ready for the Finance Committee uh, review and the Select Board review on January 21st. Um, and then, you know, another thing that we're working on this week is Power and Sullivan, our auditors are their FY20 audit um, for the town, so that'll put us in a good position to try and get our bond rating back um, because they are getting to it very early this year. Typically, it's not done for another couple of months, but um, we, we got them early on the schedule this year, so that's what we're, we're doing this week. Um, they're doing it all remotely, so um, you know they have everything that they need and they are in contact with me and Jean and the treasurer with anything else that they might need. Um, and other than that, I think the biggest, you know, the biggest thing that we worked on in the past couple of weeks has been <coughs> that meeting that we had to start having conversations about our back fee this week because that was really the biggest thing that we worked on the past couple of weeks. And that was um, the police chief, the fire chief, board of health, um, the meeting of school district representatives. There was a, a lot of people involved in that meeting. I believe they were doing the uh, first responders in Rutland coming yes. up. Yes, so, so first responders, and that, that's that, another. That would be a good avenue, though, for you to see. How they did it. How they did it, and if that group has a regional plan. Because that's another group for regional with is, is our, our dispatch. So. Yes, yeah. So uh, first responders are getting their vaccines in Rutland next week. For the first dose of their vaccine, I should say, because there's two doses. For those that want it. Yes, <laughs> for those who want it. And that's it. Okay. You guys have any questions for Jessica before we move into executive session? All right, then I make a motion. We move into executive session, including Mass General Law Chapter 30, Section 21A, to discuss strategy, strategy with respect to collective bargaining for the police union. And um, we will come out of executive session only to um, adjourn. Motion to second to go to executive session out to adjourn any further discussion like a roll call vote all those in favor Not urban, yes. and Greg O'Sullivan yes we'll just wait till we're